you out um, again. I had a mass study on this very unique species dealing with its thermoregulation. Okay, so Caramanus is known pretty now as my target species, commonly known as the firmness frog, and as its name suggests, it produces a firmness where it deposits its eggs. Uh, they are found throughout Eastern Africa and are restricted to parts of KZN, Mpulanga, and Mpopo. Um, they are very unique because they exhibit a basking behavior where they sit in the sun during the day. Um, this makes their skin properties quite similar to chameleons. Um, as Prof. Louis mentioned, amphibians are declining at alarming rates. A third of all amphibians are already um, threatened, but Caramantis is not, according to the IUCN. Um, but the declines are linked to a skin disease. The ability for Caramantis to bask in the sun provides an opportunity to study the in vivo effects of temperature change um, on uh, pathogen surveillance. Um, this is a picture of um, BD, um, which um, uh, causes mass mortalities. Um, uh, the, the fungus is called uh, Batrachia kitchen dendrobatidis, um, also known as amphibian kitchen. Um, it is globally, it's found globally, but in South Africa it also has a wide distribution, um, especially to the east and coastal areas. Um, BD's thermal tolerance um, is um, uh, quite wide, as it is very successful. It's found all over um, wide fluctuating altitudes um, and has a thermal growth range of 6 to 28 degrees Celsius, um, but above 22 degrees Celsius it loses um, pathogenic performance. Um, this provides uh, opportunities in ex situ exposing BD to frogs, uh, which um, shows that above 30 degrees uh, does eliminate the, the pathogen. So my hypothesis is um, Caramans is able to eliminate the skin pathogen by raising its body temperature above thermal tolerance of BD therefore eliminating the pathogen by basking in the sun. My aim was to observe the behavior of and determine if basking in, in amphibians regulates pathogen skin infections, and my objectives were to establish what relationship is between the skin temperature of chiromancers and BD infection load, as well as to determine the BD infection dynamics in a community of frogs. This is my study site. Uh, the northern border of the park is the um, a Sutu River, uh, which is the border between South Africa and Mozambique. Um, this is in Bimu Game Reserve, and the yellow marker is on my side. Okay, so first, when, you when we're in the field, you need to find the frogs. They camouflage quite well, so it's sometimes it's quite difficult to find them. But this is not a turbo frog, it just sits there all day. <laughs> uh, so once we find the frog, uh, we look at where the sun um, is uh, towards the frog, if the frog's back faces of the uh, sun, or if it face faces the frog, or whether the, the sun is to the side of the frog. Then we look at where the frog is found in the tree, whether it's found in the outskirts of the tree, in the center of the branch, or near the trunk. We also looked at whether the frog sits horizontally, vertically, or if it sits at an angle. Um, then we take the temperature of the frog by using a laser thermometer. Uh, we point the laser at the, on the back of the frog, at the side of the frog, and on the frog's throat. Um, as well as of the branch of the frog, and we take the air temperature. We then use a light intensity meter to measure uh, what light intensity the frog is exposed to. Um, we then measure, we weigh the frog to get its body mass, and then we measure the frog to get its snout wind length. Um, then we swab the frog, um, especially between the toes and the thighs, because that is usually where you find uh, BD. We also measure the diameter of the branch. Uh, then we did um, real-time PCRs to amplify the kitchen DNA to see which frogs um, were infected as we also swabbed other frogs in the park. Uh, Restology was also done to compare the skin of different frogs, um, namely Tychodina, which is the first one, Tychodina and Kitty. The next one is Xenophis mulleri. This is Caramantis and Felina, and the last one is Hyperolia smilorotis. Um, when we got the slides, uh, the skin slides, uh, we looked at the thickness of the epidermis, the thickness of the dermis, the length and the breadth of the mucus glands, and in Caramantis and uh, Hyperolias, they have two layers of chromatophores, and we measured the thickness of each layer. Uh, from the 145 frog swabs we had, 122 were uh, Caramantis, 75 tadpoles were screened, all of which were Caramantis, but no beauty was found in Dumu, except for one lightly infected Tychodina. Okay, so while we were in the park um, for data collection, 
uh, it was mostly overcast and 11% sun was raining. Um, but even though the sun didn't really shine that well, <laughs> the frogs still were very, very white at high light intensities. And as the day became colder or more rainy, the frog would become darker and um, it was almost like a tan color at night, as that you can see in that last picture. Okay, so when the frog um, is found in the tree, uh, mostly they were found in the outskirts. Um, sometimes they were found in the, uh, sorry, they were found mostly in the center, which is the middle part of the branch. Um, sometimes they were found in the outskirts at the edge of the branches, but hardly ever um, they were found near the trunk. Um, they usually sat in angle positions, you can see it was 65%. Sometimes they're found horizontally, but seldom they're found in a vertical position. Um, yeah, the orientation of the frog relative to exposure, 74% of the time, they're, 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 it says facing, but it means that they're back facing to the sun. 21% um, that they face facing the sun, but hardly ever they have the sun at their side. Um, the next graph shows the position of the frog relative to exposure which is, they usually sat in shade or semi-shade, but hardly ever in sun, which is where they are most exposed to environmental conditions or predators. And from the temperature, you can see that the frog is very, very similar to environmental temperatures as well as the branch temperature, and there's very little, there's very little variation, which means the frog stays at a constant temperature, um, the same as the environmental temperature. But there is a very large variation in the branch that the frog prefers to sit on, but usually they are found on branch, branches between 10 and 20 millimeters in diameter. Um, this shows that the frogs are usually found higher up in the trees, the closer they were to water, but this could be because the trees along the water are actually bigger than the rest of the trees. Um, yeah, um, a few environmental um, factors were compared to variable traits, such as um, light intensity and air temperature, and can we see that semi-sun positively correlates with light intensity and negatively correlates with shade. While air temperature correlates well with the frog sitting in an angular position, but doesn't correlate with the frog sitting in a horizontal position. So from the skin that we compared, um, it can be seen that Caramantes and um, Hyperolias had the thinnest skin between Tychodina and Xenophis. Um, this could be because, be because um, they have to uh, regulate heat as Caramantes is a basking, as a basking frog and Hyperolias is a semi-basker. Um, they all, so Hyperolias and Chiromantis also has a thicker layer of, chrom of chromatophores. Um, this is because Chiromantis can change color from white to dark, as you could see in previous uh, pictures. And Hyperolias is a, is a semi vasca and can also change color. So my conclusion is that Chiromantis optimizes its perching position in trees to allow them regulation while providing protection against predators and extreme environmental conditions. Um, Caramantis is also able to elevate its body temperature above the thermal tolerance of BD um, by basking in the sun. And it has unique mor morphological features in the skin allowing Caramantis to change color um, in warm daylight temperatures. And although theoretically um, data shows that Caramantis will be able to eliminate the BD um, infection, the lack of BD in Lumi prevented us from testing that hypothesis. I would like to thank these people and thank you all for listening.